game session breaks. I'm, uh, I suspect whatever key command I have for starting streaming destroys my Vim session. I will have to get a little bit better about that or not be on that tab when that happens. Strange. Very strange. Anyway, previously, we made a little dopey heuristic, I would say. Just take the average of all, like, the ones and use that as, like, a quick filter to check, oh, does this image look like it has a one in it? Does it look like it has something else? And we picked, like, the top two because we know we want two things. It did a terrible job. It's absolutely horrendous. It barely better than random. Uh, so I don't recommend that. Today, instead, we'll be trying to build a... I hate it. I can't say traditional. We'll build a little neural network to try to uh, go after this problem. It is a sort of a image classification problem. So that makes sense in this kind of context. Uh, but it was important to try the heuristic, to see what you get. You never know if that's going to make sense. It's a good place to start. Uh, probably you'd want to end up building multiple filters for like what kinds of uh, ones and twos and threes people tend to make. But right now we're just going to read in some data, get some things set up. OK, you might recall we had this dopey machine learning model here before. This is just a sort of straight linear regression in a sense. Uh, it is not exact linear regression because we're just doing 10 uh, binary classification problems. We're just trying to tag each uh, input data point of does this have a 1, does this have a 2, does this have a 3. So this model could, in theory, go after an arbitrary number. Well, an arbitrary number of digits slapped in up to all 10 of them at once. We're not going to try to. We only actually have two, so it's going to be a little simpler than that. But we're right now not taking advantage of that extra piece of information. So we'll slap in some SDG, stochastic gradient descent. Got our sequential Keras model here because it's just just simple, straightforward. Not doing any skip layers or anything yet. And then this is essentially the output right here. I'm going to compute 10 probabilities essentially using sigmoid to do that. And this is my input shape, 28 times 28, so we'll flatten everything out. And we're just going to see how that does. That started actually running TensorFlow. you got to compile your model. I want to know what the accuracy is. I don't recall how the accuracy metric actually worked. I don't think that's, yeah, I don't think that's the correct, that accuracy is real. In any way, any way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah, and then you can look at the hist, see, the, oh, excuse me, hist dot. What, history? Yeah, that's the one you're always interested in. How does your model do over time, for example? Things like that. You can run the predictions. You can get all those predictions out. You can say, oh, what is the actual accuracy score? Oh, I didn't import a scaling dot metrics. Well, let's go do that. Import sklearn dot metrics, because sklearn is one of those libraries that's actually written in C underneath. C can't just import sklearn and then call sklearn.metrics. You have to import the sub component as well. Okay, that's a little, little bit better. What is, what is? I'm trying to remember what these different components are. Uh, this is a legitimate accuracy, right? Looking at the validation labels that we compared with our actual predictions, right? You know, prediction greater than 0.5, that's a simple cutoff for saying like, okay, yes, we think we see that particular value in there. And then we're taking the accuracy score over all of these. So it's like, I wanna hit these false, I wanna hit these true, that kind of thing. Again, 20% is sort of just randomly guessing, right? Uh, because if I said uh, sklearn.metrics.accuracy score, of the actual correct labels and just random dot uniform and size equals whatever vlab dot shape is. Just do that. Uh, yes, greater than 0.5. That, well, that's much lower than I thought actually. That's practically nothing. I guess maybe accuracy score is doing something different. What is it doing then? I thought this was going to be like 20 for sure. For sure, that's not the case though. What do we actually have? Multi label, oh, okay. Compute subset accuracy. The set of labels predicted, for example, must exactly match the corresponding set of labels in Y true. Hang on. 
Need more in ref user guide accuracy score. Okay. That is better than I thought it was going to be. Turn score flat, normalize equals true. Da, 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 da. But, I mean, obviously, there's you could do Jakarta similarity score instead of what's the uh, of what we predicted. What's the intersection of the set that you predicted, the set I predict, or the, the truth set and the prediction set divided by uh, what's the union of those two sets, or like the size of those things in this case. Binary and multi-class classification. This function is equal to the Jacquard similarity score function. Let's look up Jacquard similarity score. Just to make sure. Blah, blah, blah. So maybe that's what's going on. Well, I guess we can check, can't we? Do we actually get the same thing if we use Jacquard similarity score? Similarity... Score. It's point six one. That is point three. Wait, what? Oh, okay. So it's not the same at all. Instead, this accuracy score is just telling me what matches exactly. What is exactly correct? This is the look for the subsets that match. So what is this thing? Last thing that I was doing then. That's what. Like, what is this number about? Oh boy. VLAB times the prediction. So anywhere they're both one, I will get a correct answer. This is the number correct. The number of correctly predicted actual labels divided by. Well, this is going to be real wrong, I think. Uh, divided by. How many labels do I have? But I divided by two again. I don't think that's right. Because I could get two in every single label, right? And if I'm dividing it by, hang on. Hang on a second, hang on a second. Because if I put in V lab, no, okay, that's right. I needed to divide by two again. I was right all along. So this is just overall, what percentage of the labels did I correctly identify? Let me add some comments to myself so I don't forget this stuff. Percent labels, percent true labels, correctly identified. But I could have false positives that I said there was a number here and there is not actually a number there. Uh, so that's like our recall, right? I don't think about that, but yes. Uh, Jacquard similarity score. Uh, yes, yeah, so the intersection divided by the union of sets. Length, really. Length, really. And this is like percent exact. Exact matches um, across within a data point, within a. Yeah, for all labels. In a in an image. Right, so this model, dopey as it is, gets, you know, 30%. Just nails it. 100% correct. Um, I think this Jacquard index is actually very interesting as well. Uh, not surprisingly, it's going to be higher than this. Because there's places where you get some correct, but not all of them. That's pretty cool. Okay, I do want to try one thing. I want to recompile this model, reinitialize it, everything. Don't train it at all. So this should get random results. But what do you actually get? That's that's actually not super far off random. Although, recall, we generated some random data, right? Where is it? Soon? Almost? Going through my history? I'll find it. I won't find it. Go to this history. There we go. We generated purely random data. Uh, these numbers are not the same. They're not even like this number's on a much lower scale than this number, like 100 times or 30 times smaller, and that's pretty consistent, right? All right, there's one of them that was actually pretty close. Whereas if I make another empty model 
and then predict, and then do this. All right, I just got lucky, apparently. This is on the same order of magnitude as several of these, so I guess it is the same. That's why you check multiple times. Uh, get a good sample of your data. Don't just take for granted that it's actually working correctly. Is my stream not functioning correct? It looks kind of empty right now. We'll see how it's going in a second here. Nah, it's still going. I might have I might have hit pause or something. There it goes. Sorry about that. Yes, so these are some simple metrics we can look at. And again, we can't really trust the metric within Keras here, right? Whatever metric they're using, uh, not in the model. I guess it's just, did I find? Yeah, okay, I did. TF dot Keras dot, is there metrics? Metrics dot accuracy score. No? What I, dot, dot accuracy, capital, excuse me. Very fancy. Hopes and predictions matches labels. I suspect this is how often do either do we match anything is my suspicion. Use computer frequencies, walk rate match labels, ultimate return to binary, accuracy, item potent, that simply divides total by count. Yes, divides total by count. It's a mean metric wrapper instance. Uh, what we might do, however, is say, Keras, Keras uh, accuracy metric, uh, multi-class, multi-label, right? Not mul You can already do multi-class. People here are asking about this as well. Weird accuracy, yada 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 yada. Like, do we just have to make our own accuracy? Is that what we're gonna have to do? Da 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 da. da. Sparse multi-label. Positive labels, majority and negative labels. Top K categorical accuracy. Well, that's interesting. What is this? Wait, wait, is binary accuracy a separate thing? Categorical accuracy. What? I did not realize. I didn't even know these existed. Show me. What is binary accuracy? Cool, you don't explain at all what it is. That's cool. Top K, what are we fine? Category binary accuracy. We'll look it up. What how exactly is it different? We can come up with our own metric, I'm sure. Alright, it's in TensorFlow. Why Fred is this nonsense that the binary accuracy is three force or point seven five? Because why? Binary accuracy we want to have. This is Y true, that's Y prediction. So those are the top two, sure, but what are the, oh, I guess that's another thing we can do. We know there's always exactly two, you can take the top two, that's the top K solution. That might be something to look at. The weights were specified as this, then the binary accuracy would be one half. It's three out of four. Really? Oh, because you predicted three of them out of, correctly out of all four. Oh, I see. So we're getting a lot of credit for the the zeros, perhaps. Classification on imbalanced data. Yeah. Uh, this might be what we want. Is there a way to set the threshold here? Da, 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 da. Yes, threshold. My five. Okay. So let's try binary accuracy. Shall we? Binary accuracy and probably the default threshold is fine. That's totally fine. Binary cross entropy, binary accuracy. See how we do here. Again, I just want to see how this model reacts when we do this. The binary accuracy is way too high, mate. Compared, like I want a number that looks like something like this. You know, how many do I get exactly correct? Oh, but I guess that's the same as regular accuracy. All right, so not that. We want instead, what about categorical accuracy? Talk to me, man. This is this, this is this. Yeah, it's not exactly correct. That's like we have a specific thing. What about this K, top K business? 
top K categorical accuracy. How often targets are in the top K predictions? No, but I have multiple labels here. Multiple labels. Sparse top K? No, that's not not what we want at all. We might just have to do like a precision recall thing. Um, I don't know, multi label metric? Maybe that's. We'll do a quick search here. Multi label classification metric. What's like? What's the right kind of thing? Multi class, multi label classification. Yes, yes, yes. Wikipedia again, the font of all knowledge. We're essentially doing a bunch of binary classification problems. You can do a hideous number of multi class classification problems. Sometimes you can get away with that. Don't want to adapt. Don't want to do that. Evaluation metrics. Label cardinality is the average number of labels per example in the set. Yes, that is the extent to which it is multi-label. Yes. Oh, what's the Hamming loss? That's a good idea, actually. Fraction of wrong labels to the total number of labels. Hmm. The Jacquard index, of course. I kind of like Jacquard index as a loss function. That's actually that's a really keen idea. I'm a fan. Do we have Jacquard? Do we not have Jacquard? Oh, bother. Oh, bother. It's in Keras Jacquard loss. Yeah, there we go. In Keras contrib. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. It's like, I don't want to have to do this thing yourself. You might just steal this. Do, 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 do. Jacquard simulated. Oh well, yeah, because it doesn't exist. Okay, we'll just grab this code. Like, I understand how Jacquard index works. This looks approximately correct. You take the intersection of these two things, i.e. by multiplying them right here. Uh, they take the absolute value, that's not a big deal for us. Uh, you take the sum of them, which is the union after our fashion, and then you, he's got a smoothing factor or whatever, uh, you take the sum minus the intersection. Intersection divided by sum minus intersection, which is the union. Uh, you return that. What is all, this is way more smoothing than I would have expected, but that's fine. We will just steal this code from Stack Overflow. Uh, the Jacquard index. Jacquard index loss function. We'll do that. Oh, this is no. I don't even want the loss function, do I? I just want this as a. I'm totally happy with binary cross entropy as my metric. Am I though? This would be kind of cool. Let's see if we can do this. Oh no! What I do? Well, I guess this is what we're doing. And if it blows up in my face, it blows up in my face. Loss equals Jacquard distance. And if I wanted to save this model, I would have to like save that function as well. But I doubt I'm gonna bother with that. I tend to just save weights. Woo, was not happy. I didn't turn off auto indent over here either. It's like, turn off your auto indent in the editor. Turn it off. In IPython, turn it off everywhere. Just turn it off. Okay. That is done. Let's see if this lets us do it. Come on. K is not defined. Oh, really? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. tf.caris.sum? Is that a thing? Is that how much read sum? Really? Oh, tf. Keras dot backend dot sum. That's what exists. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see. We'll just say that k equals tf dot keras dot backend rather than doing another import. And I'll rerun this. Make sure I've got it. Good times. Good times. Compile this model. All right. Let's, let's see what it does here. Woo! It didn't like that. Did not like that at all. So gotten used to seeing this kind of problems while you're casting. Yeah, TensorFlow doesn't have, for whatever reason, uh, doesn't natively do the casting for you. If you've got UN8s and you're dealing with float32s, you have to do the conversion. 
because it's kind of annoying. Uh, what we could do, I could change all the inputs to give me floats. Or I could just compute it in the loss function. Uh, probably it's slower to do in the loss function, but I'm going to do it there anyway. I'm going to say that y pred equals, come on, man, tf.cast y pred, and we'll just say float32. Just force it to be, uh, no, what we should do is d type equals y true dot d type. I think we can get away with that. I think so. Let's see how it likes that. Dump this in here. Access data type view and date is not allowed in list. Not in list of allowed floats. Valid values. Of course, in date is allowed, but not you in date. That's a drag. All right, fine. Fine, 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 fine. What we'll do then is I'll change the original input. Uh, D type equals numpy dot. Float 16. Yeah, make it float 32s. It's probably going to complain otherwise. It's very particular on one hand. It's good to know that your data is uh, actually a different type and you're casting all over the place. Really? Gotta reopen this thing. Here we go. Okay. Remake our Descartes distance. I guess it's certain loss functions that don't have, the, I guess the built-in ones will typically have the ability to cast for you, but not necessarily all of them. This accuracy is not necessarily better, right? Zero. Interesting. Okay. What is the problem here? Take a look at this. Everything is a six, apparently. That's curious. And yet it's still got whatever validation accuracy here? I don't believe that. Uh, not by the max of pred. Yeah, show me everything uh, up to six, up to but not including six there. Yeah, and then from seven on. Yeah, <laughs> and then in six. Yeah, that's wrong. That's really odd. Obviously, I don't know why that would be occurring. That is a terrible mystery to me. Uh, let's change this back to binary cross entropy. Maybe that's, yeah, maybe that's just a better, better solution to what we're dealing with here. And the Descartes index, while I'm using, was totally wrong. I cannot, yeah, that's just weird how it was still. Supposing to get decent accuracy. Hey, those are numbers that I'm used to seeing. Yes. Do the plot. Take a look. I find my lack of threes disturbing. That is curious. Also nines. That's that is kind of odd. Uh, well, let's look at the real data, right? That's maybe that'll be informative here. Now the real data is nice and reasonably balanced here, right? I'm sure there's better things that can be done, but uh, this looks not crazy to me. This looks reasonably random of two things. It's a little sparse, obviously, because there's only two in every row, but yeah, so that model, you know, not great. Screw the Jacquard index, it's, it's gone, we're not doing it, not having it anymore. Uh, I'll settle for the accuracy they have there, maybe I'll compute a special metric later, I don't know. Uh, actually, can I just put it in? We'll try it right here. Okay, we'll try it as a metrics. Jacquard distance. See if I can get away with that. See if that happens. Oh, that's not right. 
That's super strange to me. Like, the Jakar distance, as I understand it, well, I this, this bit, that's your intersection, intersection over your union really ought to be less than one. So I'm gonna take one minus that for some reason. Oh, okay, just to make it the, uh... okay, I follow that. The bigger this number is, the worse you are, I believe. Uh, in fact, let's, let's see that. So this number should be going down, yes. Obviously, in the validation, and not so much, but. All right, well, that's reasonably entertaining. Now, you know what? We'll do both. Uh, we'll do accuracy, accuracy, comma, this thing. Boom. We'll look both. Anyway, that's a model that does not do a very good job. Kind of frustrating, isn't it? Maybe, you know, now that I'm on a roll though, I kind of like that. Like, what are the exact matches? What is the actual Jakarta similarity score? Yeah, that's, uh, I don't know why we don't, don't get that. Uh, ooh, can I be super cool? Lambda x comma y. We're gonna get two things into any given metric, the truth, the trues and then the falses. Uh, and actually, I should not. Shouldn't be that bad. Uh, we'll say SK accuracy, SK Jacquard, right? We're gonna do that. And I'm gonna make these things over here SK accuracy is equal to lambda x uh, y true y pred and it will be nothing more than this this exactly boink and we'll do something similar then for the jacquard except instead of that it's going to be this stuff greater than 0.5 close on off good times all right that should be fine yeah because i Personally, I prefer to have the actual Jacquard score. This, I appreciate that this is a loss function. That's not actually what I want. Right? I, I want a metric. I don't care if it goes up. I don't really care if it goes up or down. I just want to have a better understanding of what it does. So that's what we're gonna do. You must compile your model for training and testing. I thought I did that. Oh, it didn't like how I did. SK Jack. It's not defined. Oh, two Cs. Thought I was good and did two C's already, but apparently not. Ack and Jack. Lambda is not a valid scope for me. Really? Really? Hogwash. Oh. Also, I need to say, you know, why true? Why? Why pred? Why true? Otherwise, they're. They're not actually functions of those variables, are they? Lambda doesn't, all right. So you cannot use lambda functions in the metrics? This is news to me. That's irritating. Uh, curious metrics, lambda function. I can't just define a quick anonymous function. I know I can make a layer. That's not what I want. Must include lambda. Blah, 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 blah. Metric and loss, different input. Da, 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 da. Ready metric is not easy. I guess you just can't. Huh. What do you know? That is most unfortunate. All right, well, whatever. Then we'll write, we'll write proper functions. Def this. Convert this lambda into an actual function. Take a little bit more space, but that's not a big deal. Do this. And return. Cool. And that was all there. Do the same thing here. And enter. Return. Awesome. Uh, def. Right. Do that. Put a space.
face here. This thing should be fine. This should now be fine. Length is not well defined for symbolic tensors. What? Where's there a length, mate? Really? So this is... Uh, doesn't like my accuracy score information. I see. I see. Is there a way to supply... Uh, he wants to compute... Obviously, SQLearn wants to compute the length. Is there a way to say, I already know what the length is? Normalize. If false, return the number of correctly classified samples. Otherwise, return the fraction of correctly classified samples. Okay. Uh, so L is going to equal my true dot shape. Right? He's calling X dot shape. Yeah. yeah. Of zero. And what we're going to do, we're going to say norm equals false, right? There's a normal lies proper. Normal lies, excuse me. Normal lies equals false. And then we'll just divide this nonsense by L. And we'll do that, we'll do the same thing here, I'm sure. Uh, actually, no, maybe not. Find out, we're gonna find out. Let's see if he yells at us still. Oh, come on. Where is he yelling at us though? Is it yelling at us in the next thing? No, it doesn't like this either. I, mean, I said normalizing was false. I tell you, you just can't have nice things. If false, return the number of correctly classified samples. Yes, that's what I want. Otherwise, return a fraction. Obviously, he wants these fancy things to be sort of actual Keras or TensorFlow type functions. Oh. Bother. Okay, well then let's do this all in TensorFlow land, shall we? We need to do y true times y pred because we want to get exactly correct. Uh, we want to take a sum, so k dot sum across certain axes. An integer, the axis to sum over. I can only pick one axis? Well, I guess I only have one axis. I need to do this. Axis equals the last one. Right. I want to get equals equals two. Right. I need to get two. I need to get both of them correct to hit all of them. I happen to know it's two in this case. If I didn't, I'd have to sort of count it from y true and I hope that I get the max score. Uh, that true is correct, uh, so this is correct. So we are just going to return correct. Oh, no, 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 hang on. Uh, pred thresh, right, we need to do this bit here. There we go. And of course, we'll say tf.cast, do all this nonsense, d type equals, you know, y true dot d type. Then we'll do this. So this converts all of our various probabilities into the 0.5s. Oh, this is only going to. Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. This isn't good. Because be, if I just always predict all ones, for example, in my prediction, I'll be able to do recall every single one. That'll be correct. Uh, but that's not actually true here. Hmm. What I need to do is I need to do this. And then, not my Fred, Fred's fresh. I'm just going to call this PT. 
save myself a little bit of space there. PT, we need that, right? But that I need to say correct times equals as well. We need to go the other way as well. I need to say one minus y true times uh, one minus PT. Who really cares at this point? One minus PT. These both have to be true. This needs to be equal eight. So I need to get all of them correct. This is a true false thing. This is a true false thing. Then we return k dot sum correct. Well, let's see if I can spell correct. Correct. Divided by whatever the length is. Okay. This Jacquard business might be a little goofier. Um, and I don't actually need that, so I might take that bit out. Okay. Let's see if this works. Custom, custom uh, metric functions. Ah, come on. Not allowed data types, of course. TensorFlow again, very persnickety about data types. I kind of wish there was just a flag that says like cast everything to whatever it needs to be. Cast it to float if you. I don't know why that doesn't happen. Like this happens in C. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh boy. Yeah, you're not a fan. I get it. I get it. Okay. What's the ultimate problem? Doesn't like the bool data type. Value passed to parameter x. So like, do I need to turn this back into like a u in, an int eight or whatever? Int eight. Let's try that. I would think I could multiply two. Oh, I know what it is. I bet I know what it is. That bit's probably fine. This bit is probably problematic. Tf cast correct. Uh, D type equals, I don't know, int 8. I don't care. U int, oh, U int 8 is a possibility. Here, let's do that. U int 8. I'll accept. It's going to take the sum, and L is not that. What is it? Int 32. Nope. It, it doesn't matter. We're doing it now. Do that thing. Take the sum. Okay. You know, I swear I was going to build a better model, but before you build a better model, you got to be able to measure it. Nope, 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 nope. Doesn't like that. What doesn't it like about it? Like, can you tell me the line that you're not happy about? I don't I correct this one. Not this one? Really? Oh, one minus true. That's a problem. Okay. So why true is a bool. BT is a bool as well. So let's change it. Oh, why true is a uint eight actually? So what is your glitch here? Has data type bool. Nothing should have data type bool here. Why true is not a data type bool. PT reading right here is not data type bool. So what is your problem here? Let's do an intermediate thing here. Let's just grab all this, just to verify it's not on that line that our problem occurs. And we'll slowly, slowly start to tease the answer out of TensorFlow. Again, does PyTorch handle this better? These are questions I'm having more and more every day. All right, where's the air today? So it gets past that part, it just doesn't like food. Okay, that's fine. What, do you not like the fact that this is an eight? Like, are you might not allowed to multiply? Can you like tf dot print? Uh, correct dot d type. Let's try that actually. Oh, it, it's not gonna matter. It's not gonna print anything. Never mind. That's when it's executing it would print. It's not even happy to execute right now. Okay, I think it might be time to just banish the bulls. 
TF.cast. Do this. Int 32. Pretend we're in C. Except in C, you know, you can do this. You don't need to do this nonsense. Okay. Int 32s. Everything's an int 32 now. Uh, which means I don't need to do this, really. That is superfluous. Okay, back here. Try to compile this. None values are not supported. La dee da. Where is there a none value? Oh, you don't like this, really. Correct is the thing. You're full of money. It's TensorFlow is making me uh making me upset. It does this from time to time. Good library, but not great. A lot of quirks. Not value is not supported. If D type is provided, forces enough IRA to be the type provided if possible. You really shouldn't have a problem with this. Like, yes, that's a that's an int, right? One minus try true. One minus pt. Yes. Those are all ints, mate. Uh oh, is it? Hang on. Hang on, hang on. Let's find tf.cast. Cast this thing to an int. Everything's in 32 now. Or just everything's a float. That becomes the next the next level of foolishness. Everything's a float now. I don't care. Sorry, we're not building the actual machine learning model, but none values. Stop it. Okay, just stop. You're not going to compile. Why are you even... What are you doing here, man? K.sum correct is not happy. O divided by L. Whatever L is, maybe. No, it just says none value is not supported. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, is it because it's empty in some position? Because we got none correct, perhaps? No, it, that should just be like K.sum of like zero, then. It ought to be totally fine and happy. There's no reason for it to be upset. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, we won't do that. Making the call. Goodbye, you're gone. Don't exist anymore. Not doing any of those fancy things. TensorFlow is not gonna play nice. Is what it is. Uh, we cap out our accuracy relatively quick here. All right, so we'll just look at it after the fact. It's fine. Oh, that's that's real bad. Yeah, yeah, that's that's real bad. Wow. Wow, wow. That is pretty bad there, isn't it? Okay, I don't think I don't know that we're gonna get too far here, but what I wanna do now is try to build a slightly fancier model. Slightly, slightly fancier. Uh, at the end, we're gonna add model.add dense 10 activation equals sigmoid. Sigmoid. Uh, but to start with, we're gonna do ReLU stuff. Okay, so here's something different where you compute 32 intermediate features based on this full like 784 linear things, then you use those 32 to compute your 10 outputs. Uh, so there's a lot more parameters to this model. Uh, that's <laughs> that could uh, could be trouble. Un unknown activation function rel. Rel u. Excuse me. Excuse me. Really, really, you gotta do be that. Sometimes, sometimes. Oh, I didn't close off a parentheses here. As usual, these things are my own own fault, but Okay, there we go. Yeah, you know, the accuracy is whatever is the same is a little worse. Who knows right now? Uh, it certainly takes a little bit longer. Well that's horrendous. Wow, none are exactly correct. Is this is this the all six model? No. This is the thirty eight percent for everything model. Interesting. Given that 
any given slot has like a 20% chance ish of being pulled. It's the same for every single input. What do the weights look like in this situation? This, is, this model is doing something real wrong, actually. Maybe the learning rate's too high. Let's make that one one hundredth of what it was. Come over here. Like, does it just climb to this terrible thing and. Well, it is what it is. No, it's just it's just bad. All right. Uh, we probably got four things here. Yeah. Got the first set of weights, first set of biases, second set of weights, second set of biases. So plot that p color mesh of w zero. So again, you've got seven eighty four inputs, thirty two outputs. So this is like our first output. Uh, it's based on these these particular numbers. Which is not, I don't know, this doesn't look super informative to me. What about this number two? Which goes from 32 to 10. Like that also doesn't actually look super informative. It might be that some of these values matter a lot more than others. Uh, or, for example, if you just look at the first. You just look at the first one. How many values don't I get? Yeah, forget, forget. One of these days. First row here. Oh shoot, do I want the row? What do I want? I want all the columns, or all the rows there in the first column. Inches or slices not tuple. What? This is hogwash. This is outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. Like, what is that? What? Oh, it. No, it has a shape. It's an it's an actual array. I see. The over, overall thing though is not array. Right. That's the problem. It's always a problem. There's your anyway. These are the 784. That's really right. Uh, actual numbers. You reshape those into 28 comma 28. You get this this nice thing, and then you can take a look at those. Just take a look at that right now. Uh, so those got squared up a little bit. Uh, this is not super informative to me. Uh, looking at this. There's probably not any structure here. You can make yourself see whatever you want. It's like, oh, there's a little blue, and then a blue, and then a blue, and then a blue. No, you're just making yourself see things. Uh, don't don't fall into that trap. Uh, there's times when you can magic eye things, and it is helpful, but that's not the right time. Okay, so that model's garbage. Absolute garbage. I want to try something different instead, no? Uh, I want to compute five numbers. So actually compress our data and then expand back out. Those might, you know what, not five. Let's do four. Because four, I might be able to just visualize without thinking too hard about this. Yeah, so there, there, there it goes, does something. Did not really do anything different. Again, it's always producing the same outputs for every single guy. That's weird. Oh, there is a point nine 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 somewhere in there. And not in the first one. Oh, that's interesting. So somewhere in here, there is a, for one, one sample? Oh no, for a handful, okay, okay. Yeah, there's better ways to, to show this. Okay, but it's rare, clearly. Most things are actually uh, zero. But uh, just a handful are not. That's super weird. Okay, you look at this, you don't really see anything. Uh, we only have four here, so we'll just look at all four. And not informative. And number two, probably also not informative. Yeah, not a lot. And number three, again, not super informative. This is surprising to me. Like, these look, oh, uh, wait a minute. How small are these numbers? Like, none of these are negative, are they? 
Can I do this? No. Uh, no. Okay, there is a small ish number. But, really. That's not the number I was seeing a second ago. Oh, was I seeing the index I was looking at? Yes, yes, because pcolor mesh doesn't actually show you. Doesn't tell you what the value is. Uh, you would have to do this, and then plot.colorbar if you wanted color bar. If you wanted something informative here. And that's, you know, vaguely balanced. Close enough. All right, so those are just hot garbage. That is. I did not expect that to be that bad. Maybe this ReLU is kicking me, kicking my butt here. It's taking a while, it takes its time. Again, the same everywhere. That's that's nutty. I, I do not. Well, what is this? You know, if these numbers are whatever they are. Plot dot p color. Eh, let's do make show so we can just go look at the number directly. You know, these are all on the order of what? Less than one, greater than negative one, that kind of thing. Whereas if you look at mm, the biases, no, those aren't that big. I, th I was ready for those to be like huge numbers, but they're not. They're not at all. So that's curious. I find this odd, but maybe the initial weights, these time the initial value times this letter value again, they just get small, it's kind of a vanishing gradient situation. That is odd. What if we did sigma here? Get rid of that, do this. Well, oh, that's terrible. I mean, it's terrible, but. Are these solutions at least you need to know? Not really. These are these are awful. Absolutely awful. This is a, this is astounding to me. How bad some of these are. I did not expect this. I mean, the linear things like sure it doesn't have to be great, but at least it did something different. You know, did something. This not doing anything. This model hot garbage. This model's actually not out of garbage. Like reading different numbers out. Uh, no, I'm getting like three numbers out though. That's still no, no good. You do something like this, come on. Yeah, real bad. I mean, look at that, our, uh, our dopey metric was doing better than that. Uh, I think, how many was it identifying exactly correct? I think it was getting you know, like 21%, which is, you know, just above our random. Uh, this, yeah, not so good. Not so good at all. All right, I would like to have a basic model that can sort of work here without turning into hot garbage. This is always predicting the same output. Got dense 10 activation sigmoid. What if I compute Mm, let's give me 10 here as well just to do something like in theory you could just pass through the identity and that would be fine but we're going to reach this 80 percent and it's going to say nope we're just going to make the same number every time and the classes are balanced too right in a sense the classes are balanced they're not actually exactly balanced for any given section uh, for any given digit, it's always 80-20, right? 80-20, 80-20, 80-20. So they're actually relatively imbalanced. Uh, that's not an insane amount of imbalance. But that is, you know, significant. So that might be part of our issue here. Uh, let's try not using SGD as well. Let's try Atom. Let's see if that makes a difference for us. I doubt it will. But accuracy is certain when you trade around a little bit more. And it does not. You see the same same kind of thing here. Alright, the sigmoid gave us like this hot garbage result earlier on. But using the atom optimizer, well, it seems to be doing 
Reasonable, where reasonable is not reasonable at all. Actually, these results are not as bad as you might think. These numbers are different. Well, yeah, they're different at least. And you expect, you know, a base like level of like 20% or whatever. Uh, but I want them to be cool, but it's nothing there. Wow. Wow. Of bread. 0. 0.503. There's just a handful of places, I bet. Uh, what's the histogram actually look like of the, the values in here? Uh, you know what? We have it. Let's plot dot hist. Oh, do, 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 print. Let me just do this. That's not really what I wanted. Not not quite what I was looking for. Uh, reshape. Negative one. Yes, the vast majority are you know centered right around here in twenty. It's like a nice little uh chi square distribution or something. I'm sure, we could fit something to that really nice, but just. Just the ever the tiniest touch are above fifty percent. So this is good in a way. We've understood something about our model a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to turn this off. Turn this line off. Uh, just go back here, and I'll let this train for ten epics. I doubt it's going to make a difference. Um, we'll start with the default atom. Just to let it do something uh, while we close out here. And so you can see, in this case, the linear model does much, much better because it doesn't get stuck in some insane rut. Uh, a linear model is able to quickly iterate uh, to something that's, you know, reasonable, not horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, we're probably not going to overfit too much just because we don't have that many parameters to fit here. Uh, you've got, what, 10, 20, I guess? Oh, no, times all the, the pixels that we have to deal with. Uh, so we have a model that's linear. It does a lot better than the, the like, take the mean and just use that to predict. You'll notice you get, one, you get different numbers, and you get, like, highly, really strong. This is definitely 1.0. Like, this is basically zero. This is basically zero. This is really zero. Zero, one. It's, this is, what is this? This is 18%. That's an unusual one. I say plot dot p color mesh on pred now. You'll see interesting things. And you don't see that many interesting things. They're mainly plus and one, plus and minus one. So there's a few places in here where they're not. But plus and minus one is what we actually want. And that's why this model, you know, 13% above random. Which is a lot better than we did before. So I think we're gonna call it there for now. It is what it is kind of thing. Next week what we will do is we'll take this model and we'll probably build a simple convolutional neural network uh, in order to take advantage of some of these spatial uh, correlations, the spatial propinquity, uh, the nearness of these pixels to each other to help inform the solution. And hopefully that'll help us uh, start to solve this problem. I'll be curious how high we can actually get this. Like, can we get 50%? Can we get 80%? Can we just max out? That, it'll be the question. All right, that is all I have for tonight. Thank you all for watching. And once again, stay safe in the data mines.